This signal has predicted every crash in the past. If you want to make money investing in crypto stocks or real estate and maybe even gold, you need to pay attention to the bond markets. Currently in the US, the bond markets are flashing a warning signal about the growth prospects for the US economy. The feds have seen the soaring inflation and they are looking to higher interest rates to tackle it head on. So what is a bond? A bond pays a fixed income to the investor from the borrower, which is typically companies and governments. A bond could be thought of as an IOU between the lender and the borrower that includes the details of the loan and its payments. And so in the case of US, the US will say, hey, we need $100 for the next two years and we'll pay you 3.5% yield every year for the next two years, which in this case will be $3.5 and pay you back the principal of the same $100 at the end of the two years. So here you make $7 profit for lending out $100 and this is considered the most risk-free investment in the financial markets. And so when these bonds are issued by the US government, we call these many different things, government bonds, treasury bonds, notes, government notes, treasury notes, or treasuries. So the US can issue these bonds for investors or lenders for different terms. Some of them will promise the return of the principal in one year, five years, 10 years, or even 30 years, and the yield rate will be different for each of those terms. And here is how the bonds have consistently predicted market crashes in the past. There is a difference between yield rates for long-term and short-term bonds. The way it normally goes is, say if you lend money to your friend and he says he will pay you back in one day versus he says he will pay you back in three years. Which do you think is more risky? Arguably, there is less that is gonna go wrong in the next day versus three years, so the market usually expects the shorter term to be less risky than the longer term. And based on that risk factor, the government prices in the bond yield rates palatable to the lenders, meaning shorter term bonds attract lower yield rates and longer term bonds attract higher yield rates. So the gap between the long-term and the short-term government borrowing rate is what we observe to predict market crashes. In big developed countries, this gap has narrowed drastically since autumn. In the US, so-called the yield curve inversion occurred last week for the first time since 2019, an event that in the past has been the megaphone of economic downturn. Historically, the US recession tends to follow a year after the curve inversion. Although the variance is large and there are occasional false positives, so let's take a look at what it means that the bond yield curve has inverted. So based on what we know about the natural risk profiles of shorter and longer loan maturities, the yields when plotted against the terms would be usually upward sloping, whereby a higher fixed rate of return is earned from lending money for longer periods of time. Shorter term yields tend to represent what investors believe will happen to central bank policies in in the near future, and longer dated maturities represent investors' best guess at where their inflation, growth, and interest rates are headed over the medium to long term. However, when an economy is slowing, an inflation expectation decline, yields on 10 and 30 year bonds typically fall towards those of shorter maturities, such as three months and two year notes as bond buyers bet there is less need for central banks to raise borrowing costs in the future. Instead, they may need to encourage spending. This so-called flattening of the yield curve can at some point become a recessionary signal. An inversion of the yield curve has preceded every US recession for the past half century. There are two possible explanations for this predictive power. One is that trading in the $31 trillion US government bond market serves as a kind of early warning system which identifies approaching dangers that individual forecasters struggle to spot. The other is that shifts in the shape of the yield curve play an active role in triggering downturns by undermining confidence in the economy. And of course, Richard McGuire, Fixed income strategist at Rival Bank famously said, people get excited about the yield curve because historically it has been a good predictor of onset of recession. And so to get a clearer measure of this inversion, what we have done is mapped out the difference between two year and the 10 year US Treasury yields. Let's understand what this means. If the 10 year yield is a big number and the two year yield is a small number, just as it should be, then we will see the graph in the positive section. And if things starts to look wrong, then the graph will be in the negative section where the two-year yield is much bigger than the 10-year yield. And so with higher yield rates in the shorter term, we expect more risk in the near term than for the relative risk in the long term in the case of 10 to curve being in the negative. As you can see, every time the yield curve inverts or the 10 to yield curve flips from positive to negative, we see a recession shortly after, as you can see in 1950, 52, 91, 01, 08, and 2020. And did you see how dangerously negative we are like right 
now. And so during periods of economic expansion and very accommodative monetary policy where governments use low interest rates to encourage spending and boost economic activity, the yield curve steepens. You can see that this has occurred following the 2008-2009 financial crisis and early last year after the pandemic recession. And the latest inversion of the yield curve where the two-year yield last week rose above 10-year yield came as investors worried that a rapid series of rises in interest rates by the Federal Reserve could cause a sharp economic slowdown. The US Central Bank lifted borrowing costs for the first time since 2018 last month, and it is expected to do by a further two percentage points in the remainder of the year as it grapples with the highest inflation rate in decades. And just yesterday, the rates were increased to three and a half percent, with Jerome Powell admitting that rate rises were necessary to slow demand, easing the pressures, putting up prices and avoiding long-term damage to the economy whilst admitting that the economy will take a massive toll. He said, we have got to get this inflation behind us and I wish there was a painless way to do that well, there simply isn't. As you can see, this isn't just a problem for the US as the inflation has been quite bad across the entire world. The crazy thing is that whilst historically, we saw the flipping of the 10 to yield curve in the good times as a signal for the bad times to come, we are actually kind of already in a bad time now seeing these signals for an even worse time in the future. Currently, we're in a crazy high inflation, which clearly the Fed is trying to fight. And the inflation seems to worsen with the rest of the US government not being that cooperative with the monetary department as US continually sends billions of dollars in aid as part of their foreign policy, keeping tariffs on China in the tune of 15 to 25 percent in imported goods from China, which the consumers in the US ultimately pay for. For giving up to 0.4 trillion dollars worth of debt to students, which is just another form of inflation, and the Inflation Reduction Act, which doesn't really look like it's going to have a positive impact anyway. Because tell me where that seven and a half thousand dollar tax credits totaling to $1.9 trillion would come from if it isn't from the printing press. And of course, we have already crashed 33% from the top in the NASDAQ chart. So here we are, high inflation, stagnant economy, pending market crash signal, and people fed up by the increase in Fed rates. Where do we go from here? How low can we go?